Pat McCrory, the, uh, the former governor of North Carolina, lost the election. He lost the election by about 7,000 votes, uh, specifically 7,448 votes. And he knows the Republicans know, well, this, uh, this is a piece by, um, uh, in Slate that I, I commend to you, slate.com. It's by Mark Joseph Stern, and it's titled, Pat McCrory Lost the North Carolina Governorship. Now he's trying to steal it. Now, see, he knows that if they actually do a statewide recount, the numbers will probably come up pretty much the same. And even if he gains some votes, he's not going to gain nearly 8,000 votes. He might gain a few hundred. You'll recall, you know, Al Franken, when they did the statewide recount in Minnesota, it was just a couple hundred votes. You know, recounts typically don't produce that big a difference from the original count. And Pat McCrory knows that. He can't win by saying, okay, you know, the votes were miscounted. He can't win by saying the Democrats suppressed the vote because it was the Republicans who were trying to suppress the vote. Uh, this is, uh, he lost, by the way, to Democratic Attorney General Roy Cooper. So he, his strategy now is to delegitimize the actual process of voting in North Carolina, to say, and he's saying it, and not just him, but, you know, his minions, you know, the, all the right-wing hate radio stations all over North Carolina, they're pounding on this. There's an all-out right-wing hate radio media assault on this going on in North Carolina. And, you know, in some cases around the, some of the right-wing hate radio around the country, supportive of Pat McCrory, saying, uh, you know, uh, felons voted, dead people voted, the Democrats scammed the vote. I mean, you know, we heard this in 1960. I remember the election of 1960, and I remember all the Republicans going, oh, you know, Richard Nixon really won. The only reason uh, Kennedy is the, in the White House is because uh, uh, the, the, the mayor, Mayor Daley of Chicago, had all these voting machines. And the ones that, and this was back in the days of the lever, you know, the mechanical machines where you pull the lever and the little mechanical counter, you know, tick, 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 would count the votes. Transparent. You could see how it worked. So what did the Republicans claim? They said, well, those, those voting machines that were, you know, in the predominantly Republican districts, uh, he took them out and dumped them in the Chicago River. Well, A, that's not true. And B, even if he had, even if JFK, even if Chicago had flipped to Nixon, JFK still would have won. But in the Republican, you know, in the fevered Republican brain, it was like, oh, there's got to be voter fraud if we lost. And Pat McCrory is pitching this thing. And Mark Joseph Stern writes for Slate, this chicanery will be easier to pull off than you might expect. Now, this is where it gets really chilling. He said, uh, he writes, Republican-controlled county election boards have forcefully rejected McCrory's challenges, concluding there is simply no proof of widespread fraud or malfeasance, as McCrory claims, Frustrated by these setbacks, McCrory petitioned the Republican-controlled State Board of Elections to take over the review process. The board refused. McCrory's team now has launched a, a misinformation campaign to cast a pall of suspicion over the results. His campaign spokesman said, quote, why is Roy Cooper, this is the Democrat who won the governorship in North Carolina, why is Roy Cooper fighting to count the votes of dead people and felons? Well, he's not. Nobody is. But, you know, Republicans and lies kind of, you know, McCrory's close ally and current state budget director, Andrew T. Heath, also tweeted the Durham College. Now, this is, for example, lies, right? Here's the actual numbers. Durham County, which is a, uh, I believe, a largely black county, has a population voting age population of 235,000 and change. 193,000 are registered to vote. Those are the actual numbers, okay? Now, here's what the tweet 
from the current state budget director, Andrew Heath, said. This is, you know, Pat McCrory's henchman. His tweet said that, uh, I'm not quoting, I'm quoting from the article here um, by, um, where did it go? Mark Joseph Stern. He says, uh, McCrory's close ally and current state budget director, Andrew T. Heath, also tweeted that Durham County has 231,000 residents over the age of 18, but 232,000 re registered voters. In other words, 1,000 more registered voters than people who actually live there, implying fraud. He says, in reality, Durham's 2015 voting age population was about 235,000. The county has only 193,000 active registered voters. Its Republican-controlled election board has already unanimously rejected a complaint alleging malfeasance. So now McCrory's lawyers, uh, right, Stern, are targeting black American voter outreach groups for purportedly mi violating minor procedural rules while helping voters fill out absentee ballots. The governor has falsely accused these groups of conducting a massive voter fraud scheme. Now, here's, here's how he's trying to play it out. The real goal, the real goal, writes Mark Joseph Stern in Slate, appears to be to delegitimize the results to such an extent that the state legislature, which holds a Republican supermajority, can step in and select him, McCrory, as the winner. North Carolina state law says that, quote, when a contest arises out of the general election and that contest pertains to the conduct or result of the election, the legislature shall determine which candidate received the highest number of votes and declare that candidate to be elected, end of quote. So McCrory is laying the groundwork for this. And the best part, under the law, the legislature's decision is not reviewable by the courts. Republican legislators can simply step in, overturn the decision of the voters, and grant McCrory another term. The courts have no authority even to review the legality of their actions. He, he adds, this is the, the reporter, Mark Joseph Stern for Slate Magazine, Slate.com, adds, while McCrory works to reverse the results of his election, the legislature is contemplating a plan to effectively negate a state Supreme Court contest. On election day, voters ousted, well, I can just tell you about this. I don't have to read it. Um, the state Supreme Court was roughly 50-50, and there was a conservative and a progressive running for, the open, for an open seat on the state Supreme Court, and the people of North Carolina elected the progressive. So now the state Supreme Court in North Carolina has a progressive majority. So what are they going to do? They're going to add two more people to the state Supreme Court and before McCrory even leaves office, let him appoint them so that the state Supreme Court is back to having a Republican supermajority. As Mark Joseph Stern writes, now they're floating a plan. Republican legislators so feared this result that they attempted to bar the progressive candidate from running, passing a law that was struck down as unconstitutional. Now they're floating a plan to pack the court, expanding it from seven to nine members and allowing McCrory to name its two new members, thereby conserving its conservative majority. The legislature passed HB2 in 12 hours. It could ram through a court packing bill just as quickly. Their blatant preference for raw power over Democrat, small d Democratic legitimacy should alarm us all. What's happening in North Carolina is not mere politics. It is a perversion of democracy. I couldn't have said it better. And this is the what you are looking at is the Republican mindset, which is, to a large extent, the white supremacist mindset saying, wait a minute, as Pat Buchanan said, you know, our country's slipping away from us, white people. And we've got to, we've got to hang on to the levers of power. Good luck with that. We'll be back.